Welcome back to Munter's Yard. Today we're going to get down and dirty with the Redland. Now in the last video we converted the Redland uh, Class 06 to run on DCC. So it runs quite happily around the layout now. But it looks a bit too clean and pristine uh, for its setting that it's in. So we're going to use uh, some techniques to weather it up and make it a little bit more grimy. This one will be a little bit more weathered than, uh, than other models that we'll use in the future because this will be just in a yard, not seen by the public. And they uh, do tend to get a bit mucked up. Other locos that will go out on the main lines will be a bit more presentable so it won't be as uh, as weathered as this so this will be quite heavy now, the techniques we use on this um, it's not a tutorial such this is just the way that I do things or just the way I'm going to do this model anyway there are lots of great modelers out there much much better than I am and they use different techniques and what I do is a mix and match of, of things that I've already seen so by all means follow along if you pick up any tips and that's absolutely great i hope you enjoy watching um let's get to the workbench here we go is the uh 06 looking lovely and uh pristine not for much longer first we need to do is uh mask off the windows don't get paint on the windows so we use the liquid mask from vallejo and that's uh it's like a rubber solution we just paint it on um it will dry uh, pretty clear so you know when it's it's dried and then we just peel off later on using a cocktail stick or something. Doesn't matter if we get it exactly right, because um, there will be dirt in the windows anyway. There we go, you can just see it will start to dry. Next thing we need to do is dull down the paintwork. The green's a little bit bright, and we need a bit more uh, sort of sun uh, bleached. So rather than just using white, put a touch of green in there. It's the only green I've got, but just a one little drop of that, three of white, and then uh, probably double the amount in uh, thinners just to make it really really thin and then we'll just um, really mainly concentrating on the top surfaces where the Sun would have hit and uh, and bleached it so very very lightly it doesn't matter if we get it over the uh, the, uh, the logos too much because that would that would naturally fade anyway but we don't want to make it too obvious so it's just really just to just to make it a little bit lighter on the top and then stick it down the side so just some downward strokes here and on the back, we're going to do a couple of patches so it looks like it's had a bit of a shoddy repair uh, during its life as um, you use different colour um, greens and the pigments will go. So we'll take the, uh, the masking off the roof. We didn't want to get the green on there. Um, but we're going to, uh, to dissolve down the cab roof. So we'll mask this off. We're going to airbrush it in a, in a lighter shade so it's not so exactly just black. To be fair, I probably could have just uh, dry brushed this or something without taking it off. Um, but anyway, it'll take a second. So Vallejo again, and mix it up very, very um, weakly again. And we just, just dull in the color down a little, just take off the, uh, the newness of it. And then they used a very, uh, a light brown as well, just, just to kind of give a, a like a rust um, sort of overtone on the roof. So once it's all assembled again, I'm going to put a, a matte varnish over it just to protect it a little bit. So if we do any brushing, um, it's not going to affect the, uh, the, the layers we've already done underneath. Now looking at some of the pictures of, of other um, shunters, some of the white um, warning signs have actually run, the whites run off of that. So we just did a bit of that, just simulate that. So some of the um, streaks are going to look a bit uh, too obvious and over the top at the moment but as we put different colours and further layers and washes on uh, they will um, sort of blend in a bit better I mean the in the white runs that's uh, kind of simulating the, the rain um, some of the streaks from the rain we're going to put some rust in as well just using the Humbra wash I haven't used these uh, many times before so I'm really getting used to using the using these probably and getting a, a bit of a technique going but as I say, it does blend in a bit better at the end. And now for a rust on the roof and the rest of the, the body, we're going to use uh, this Vallejo orange. 
and then I prefer just a dotted on and then we'll just stipple it with a dry brush or you could just dry brush it immediately on so straight from the um, straight from the paint but I prefer to do it this way I don't know where the, the dots are going to go and then well rust is normally more than one shade so we can use chocolate brown as well from Vallejo this is part of the um, the rust streak and grime set that they do and just a touch in there just to add a different color and a different texture and again we'll uh, we'll stipple that in Just make sure from time to time you clean your, your stippling brush because it will get loaded with paint and uh, you'll introduce paint where you don't really want it at the end. So we're just going to carry on going around in the, in the places that you, you might expect rust to form, so corners and some bare edges, etc. Just go gently uh, each time. Just add more and more as you go. It's it's easier to add than it is to take away, as I'm sure they always say. So further thing, we're going to do the same all all the way around. A bit more on the roof here, and you can see that the white streaks underneath are starting to sort of blend in and fade away and not be so obvious. Just remember to keep the brush. Uh, fairly dry, fairly clean, wipe it on the, on the tissue. And now for a few runs down the side of the cab. As the rain washes the, the rust off of the roof, it will run down the side of the cab naturally. So a few little streaks down there. Now I'm just using the brush, totally dry. But you could use it with, uh, with a, a thinner um, and then drag it further down. Or some people use oil paints, they work quite well. Just bear in mind that if you're using thinner, you, you could take the uh, the white coating on, as you've seen, I've already done that over there. So where we've, we've faded it down, you can see on the back on the left, it's um, we've used a bit of thinner and it's taken the paint off. This is the rust uh, wash again. And I'm just using this not to uh, not to make any runs, but just to just kind of add a, a shade underneath some of the uh, the pipes and around the window here. And we need to do this all around the uh, all around the shunter as you've seen so we've done that uh, on all the particular places where where the rust and uh, the grime will uh, will settle now for some of the oil slicks we're going to use um, this German uh, black brown and again just going to dot it on and then uh, stipple it you see on lots and lots of shunters uh, plus 06 and 08 so there seems to be this big oil patch around this sort of area some of them are absolutely huge so we're just going to simulate something like that it's looking a little bit obvious at the minute but again as we put more layers on and um, and a brush it at the end uh, it will sort of blend in a bit more Next is black grey. We're just going to add that to the to the little oil uh, leak mark, whatever it is, the run, um, because they're never they're never just one colour. There will seem to be a few different colours. Don't tend to use much of uh, like a solid black on any of these because most things oil leaks and so on are not are going to be exactly black. They're normally brown black. Having said that, using a black wash just to start to blend a little bit. So the black wash will go around these these edges here. Just just as highlight them a bit, just to give a bit more detail. And then on the top of the cab, where it's already a bit mucky, um, just just to uh, dull it down just a bit further. Now washes will the the black wash from Humbrol will dry a bit lighter anyway, so it won't be quite as obvious. But you can see a bit of streak in there on the on the other side. And we've added some oil marks around the bottom of the um, sort of the engine bay, and just a tiny bit of black, really, really uh, dilute, just to add like a, a, a overall sort of sooty layer over the top. So that 
I think we're getting there now. Next thing to do is to uh, is to do the wheels. Now I, I tend not to airbrush these because you, you can't control it too much and you start getting too much overspray on the wheels, which takes too much cleaning but later on. But we're just gonna uh, brush it and then we're gonna stipple it again. Uh, using the same colors as before. So the, the uh, chocolate brown and the um, and the gray. So the gray is really to sort of simulate the grease, but we're gonna add some few other bits to that uh, later on to uh, just to enhance that a bit more. Now onto the buffers. Now they've already got uh, a gray coating on those and we're gonna do a chocolate brown uh, little dot in the middle. And then we'll add some grease later on. Now for just an overall rust effect, we're using uh, burnt sienna, uh, Vallejo um, weathering powders. It's so easy to get too much of this on, so really, really need to clean your brush. But even with that, you can see it's, it's laying quite a bit of uh, powder on. The thing with powders, once is you um, put a varnish over the top, the effect will go um, be reduced quite significantly anyway. So don't worry too much. But um, just really be careful not to overload your brush. Just, just get a dab out of the pot and uh, and take most of it off. And you can still see it laying behind, you know, uh, an element of the of the rust. It just gives a hint that the uh, that the whole thing is pretty rusty. There are different shades of uh, these uh, weathering pigments for the rust. I've got three or four. Um, this is one of my favorite, one of the brighter ones, and there's, there's a darker one as well that I tend to use a lot. But this one's quite um, quite vivid. Once we've done that, we're gonna give it a couple of coats of uh, matte varnish. And this just protects it a bit more from when you start to handle the, uh, the model. And as I said, it will dull down some of the, um, the weathering powders that we've done. You can see the effect's not as pronounced now. There's some of the um, like the axles and uh, and so on. We're going to give this um, this sort of bearing grease. So it's it's an enamel paint. It dries fairly um, uh, shiny. So it looks it gives it like a wet appearance. I'm using it on the buffers as well and rounding our little oil slick. So these do tend to run, so we give like a streaking effect, but you can um, sort of guide it if you choose to. You just sort of drag it down a little bit and it will start to flow. And as you, as it dries, it will um, leave a sort of softer edge, like a, like a natural sort of oil leaks. It's quite a nice effect. Last thing to do is to clean off the wheels. So. Although we didn't spray, we, there you can see there's still some paint on the uh, on the wheels there, and that will have a problem with um, picking up the, the power from the track. So we need to do that uh, on the bit we can see, and then we need to rotate the wheels using some power for the track, and then do in the underleaf. And also, don't forget to take off the um, the liquid mask from the windows as well. Just use a, a blunt um, cocktail stick. So there we go. Quite a heavy effect. Maybe not to everyone's liking but um, typical of the uh, of the way these, these would get used. If you look at archive pictures, you'll see that they are um, incredibly mucky, some of them. So there we go. I hope there was something useful in the video for you. I've left links to most of what we've used in the uh, description below. Next thing you have to do is the Here's the wagons, um, the Redland wagons, which um, we've got 10, so it's going to take a little while to do. Uh, that'll be the next video along. If you've enjoyed watching this video, please subscribe, click the little bell icon, and then you'll be notified every time we put a new video up. So that's it for today. Happy modeling. We'll see you soon.